I'm Ellis Martin. Join me now for a conversation with Adam Smith, co-founder and vice president of business development for Oroco Resource Corp., a public mineral exploration company trading on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol OCO and in the U.S. on the OTCQB market under the symbol ORRCF. Oroco is focused on the development of a large copper deposit in the Santo Tomas project in coastal northwest Mexico. Santo Tomas hosts a multi-billion pound copper resource defined by historical drilling and currently being confirmed by ongoing exploration drilling by Oroco. Copper mineralization at Santo Tomas is located at surface and therefore potentially amenable to low-cost mining methods. It's very well located with respect to the infrastructure that's essential to a large mining operation. And Mexico is among the world's top mining jurisdictions with laws and trade agreements that protect the rights of mining companies. Since commencing exploration and resource definition at Santo Tomas three years ago, Oroco has made a series of rapid advances and the year ahead is rich with catalysts such as a formal resource definition and economic evaluation, each of which carries the possibility of a company valuation re-rating. These milestones will be achieved against the backdrop of a positive forecast for the price of copper, possibly to historical highs, as a result of dramatic shifts in metals' importance to industrial and consumer markets. Adam, welcome back to the program. It is fantastic to visit with you today. Thank you, Ellis. Adam, bring us up to date on copper and Oroco specifically. There's a lot happening in the world of copper. There's a lot happening in the world of copper exploration significantly for us. Copper M&A, major mining companies buying copper assets. And as that progresses and as the understanding of future copper needs progresses, M&A is just getting busier and is at a point in time where those acquisitions should start to look at companies like ourselves. But first, I'd like to talk about a news release that Oroco recently issued. We announced a copper resource utilizing the 76 drill holes we've completed in the last two years together with a number of drill holes drilled prior to to our tenure on the property. And Oroco announced a maiden resource for the Santa Tomas copper deposit in Northwest Mexico, containing over a billion tons of ore with a collective eight and a half billion pounds, that's billion pounds of copper recoverable. At today's copper price, the in situ metal value at Santa Tomas is approximately $33 billion. So we announced a very significant resource, a very big copper asset at a time when the world's investors are going to be focusing more and more on copper. That is an astounding number, Adam, that I've not heard in my ears at all. Well, I think it highlights the nature of these types of deposits, these so-called porphyry copper, large, lowish grade or lower grade disseminated ore bodies that can contain tens of billions of pounds of copper. They're the source of most of the world's 200, 250 billion dollars of annual copper sales and production, and they can be very, very large businesses. So porphyry copper deposits are the large assets owned by the world's biggest mining companies. They can be in production for decades. In fact, in some cases, they can be in production for a century or more, as is the case with many large porphyry copper deposits today. Porphyry copper deposits can generate tens of billions in revenue. They can do so over generations, multiple decades. They can do so over multiple commodity price cycles, and they're the real generators of income for the world's biggest copper companies. They're significantly different than a lot of the types of mineral deposits that junior mining companies explore for. For instance, at $33 billion of contained metal value at Santa Tomas, So porphyry copper deposits are the tier one assets in the mining industry. They're ones that major mining companies seek to develop and discover. They're increasingly becoming more difficult to discover. Pipeline of such projects to be put in production to meet our future copper need is at historic lows. And so for Oroco to announce this resource at this time is very significant. And it's a very significant achievement for Oroco to have done this in the last two years, to have developed the infrastructure on site, to have hired the crew, capable of doing this kind of program and to have completed almost 50,000 meters of drilling in 76 holes in two years is an accomplishment. So a shout out to our crew in Northwest Mexico and uh, congratulations and thank you to them. Well, certainly I've been following the company for over 16 years and this is quite an accomplishment. And sometimes it takes a while to develop something that really positions you for something that you alluded to a few minutes ago, an M&A, whether or not you do it now, whether or not you do it during the next five or 10 years, something of this nature, something of this size is certainly going to wake a lot of people up. And in that note, the last two years were really the major years in, in putting this project forth. 
What's the next step here? Yeah, the last two years have been very, very important. I think they've taken Santa Tomas from a known occurrence of a copper porphyry to one now defined under current mineral reporting standards. That's a very, very important transition. But to take a project like Santa Tomas from discovery to production, it's increasingly difficult with higher standards imposed on mining companies, longer permitting processes. A copper occurrence in Santa Tomas was discovered in the 1960s. It was drilled between the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, and almost 30 years after its discovery was the first mineral resource reported at Santa Tomas. And then it took another 20 years to get to the stage where we're at now. The pace can be expected to accelerate now that we have a compliant mineral resource standards of this size. But to take projects from discovery to production is becoming increasingly difficult, which makes the definition of this resource today that much more valuable. We will follow up this phase one drill program and mineral resource estimate with an economic assessment of so-called preliminary economic assessment, which takes the copper resource, applies an estimated capex, the capital required to put it in production, the estimated operating cost and the revenue, and put that together in a concise study that should give a, a very good snapshot of what Santa Tomas would look like in production, a deposit that is capable of generating over a billion dollars of revenue for a generation. That study will contain things like the net present value of the future cash flows, net of the costs to put it in production, and it will give investors a snapshot of what the value of this is. But a mineral deposit with an in-situ metal value of $33 billion is going to be a very valuable asset. Adam, after all this time and And again, I'm going to bring the number up 16 years, about as long as I've known you, I think 2006, which is a bit longer. Is it inconceivable to make the assumption on my part that within one or two years, maybe three, you're gone, you've been acquired? Mergers and acquisitions, the acquisition of copper assets by major mining companies has heated up in recent years. There is a bid on the table right now, a multi-billion dollar, tens of billions of dollar bid, in fact, by Glencore, a Swiss company for the Canadian company Tech. A BHP acquired Oz Minerals, Copper Mountain was acquired. Hud Bay made acquisitions recently. So a lot of the world's big mining companies have been on the hunt. They have, in recent quarters, acquired producing assets, those assets that are already in production. They carry relatively little risk and they immediately add copper revenue to a big company's bottom line. A lot of those acquisitions now are reaching maturity. There's not a lot of those big assets left. The major mining companies are then going to be looking for the next tier of assets, the next stage of M&A, if you will. And that will look like the major mining companies buying so-called greenfield projects, projects that still have to be put in production. Obviously, that carries a little more risk for them. And so it usually what happens in the latter stages of an M&A cycle, we believe that Oroco, with the announcement of this resource, today puts it into the category of companies of assets that would be interesting to major mining companies. So yeah, I think M&A is a distinct possibility as we go forward here. Over the next 12 to 18 months, we'll certainly mature the studies at Santa Tomas, the economic studies. We'll do additional drilling to further de-risk the asset. We'll do additional community work and work with all levels of government to, again, further de-risk it. And at some point, the desire by major mining companies to buy copper assets and the maturity of Santa Tomas will presumably come together. And so that is what we're hoping for this asset. But at the same time, copper prices are forecast to go to such levels that owning these assets is only going to get better. They're only going to get more valuable if those forecasts come true. And as long as Oroco continues to advance and de-risk Santa Tomas, I believe that rising copper price, if it comes to pass, will make the assets more valuable and make Oroco a more valuable company. And what can we expect from the company during the next couple of quarters in 2023? Well, following the announcement of this mineral resource estimate, which has the company very encouraged and very fired up, ready to move forward. I think you'll see the advancement of the preliminary economic snapshot of Santa Tomas. There will be a second phase of drilling because the first phase has ended on some particularly good hole that that really beg follow-up that look like they carry a probability of increasing the resource even more. And there's a number of small things that we will do that together add up to further de-risking of the project, such as acquisition, obtaining the surface rates, because to operate a mine, you need both the surface and the mineral rates. Increasing Oroco's 85.5% ownership in the property through additional expenditures and further studies beyond the preliminary economic assessment to further de-risk and define what an operation at Santa Tomas would look like. Adam, it's always great to catch up with you. I look forward to more chats in the very near future. Thanks so much for joining me today in the program. I really appreciate it as always, Al. I've been speaking with Adam Smith, co-founder and vice president of business development for Oroco Resource Corp. Oroco trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol OCO. 
and in the U.S. on the OTCQB market under the ticker symbol ORRCF. Go to the company's website, OrocoResourceCorp.com. For Adam Smith and Oroco Resource Corp., I'm Ellis Martin. Subscribe to the Ellis Martin Newsletter. It's free. Go to ellismartinreport.com and fill out the quick and easy pop-up form.